So welcome. This project, Pathways for Effective Information Transfer Between Manure and Management Professionals, as you'll see pop up here, was kind of the brainchild of Aaron Cordes at uh, South Dakota State University and myself, Nicole em Emberson, as a way to address the big issue that we saw next. Um, barriers to information transfer occur in many different areas and many different things. In particular, what we were seeing was education and outreach portion of projects were often mistargeted. Um, needs of service agents were not being well understood. Um, we also found that end users don't know exactly how to adapt research results to their needs. They were having a lot of challenges with that. And that the end products oftentimes were wrong format or too complicated for people to adopt. So we kind of found that there was a barrier between information providers and information producers, if you will, and the users that they were trying to target. So this was kind of um, something we wanted to address. Some examples of this would be University Extension would put out a guidance or article to producers without understanding NRCS standards or state and local rules and regulations. We'd find that research develops a model or tool that couldn't be used by the service agent because it couldn't be adapted to the means or it was too complicated for folks to understand. Other examples were that research project reports oftentimes ended up in a journal article, but it never really got to that end user, that producer, or that service agent. Additionally, research needs and answers of service providers, whether that be NRCS, conservation districts, et cetera, and producers are oftentimes very different than the university research plan and our funding sources. And I'm sure many of you on the line can think of other examples in your personal experience where this might have happened, where there was a big gap between what you were providing or what you needed and how to get that. So we found that um, we needed a roadmap between producers and end users that identified four major things. That would be identifying what are the end, the needs of that end user, target groups and points of contact. So who are those people? How do you get to them? Effective information transfer pathway, exactly trying to establish what those are and who those people are, how do you get to them most effectively finding that information, which can be very challenging. And then, of course, finding the appropriate end user format and language so that people were getting what they needed in the format that they needed. So with all that together, next slide, we developed this project. And actually where this originally came from was at the Waste to Work Conference in 2013. We had a session in there for nutrient management, and we realized that, wow, there was everyone had a similar complaint about this kind of information development and use and a big gap there. And so we decided to put, out, put a project together to say, let's do a survey. Let's look at what people are doing out there, who's using what, and see if we can connect these things up together. Next slide. So our main project objectives were to, one, document effective information transmission methods, pathways, and formats for all the different audience types. Two, to demonstrate a hierarchical decision tree, if you will, approach of information dissemination between the various, various audience types. So by having these two pieces to have a document and then a way to actually use that, we figured, hey, this is going to be great. And this is the process that we're going to share with you today as far as our survey results and what we've done with that information to date. Next slide. So just kind of an overview, actually, of what we've done to date. This has been a few years in the making in this project and all the various pieces. Well, we have that main objective, which I shared to you, and then we put together a fantastic project team. I'm going to go over that in the next slide. We developed a survey in a pilot process to start with in um, South Dakota and then the North Central region, and then we took that live. And then the next part was that uh, national survey piece went out and linking those pathways together. And we're working on that piece now, and Joe's going to have a great way to share that to you today. 
So this national discussion group uh, represented different audience types. We, we had this together so that we had the right terminology, methods, opportunities, and restrictions specific to each one of those groups. We had folks participating in group discussions so that we were making sure that we were capturing all the needs and voices and ideas from many different groups. And we'll show you what that list looks like in a bit. And then when necessary, assemble feedback from all these associates. Next slide. That national working group that we had was really great. Additionally, as I mentioned, we had funding from the South Dakota Fairgrounds and the North Central Region Water Network, which I'd like to acknowledge that got this project going. And then you can see all these folks from this national team and contributors that we're so grateful for all their help. In particular, I'd like to call out a few folks who spent a lot of time putting this project together. Aaron Cordes, Nicole Umbertson, Joe Heemstra, Amy Schmidt, Tang Lim, Jeffrey Jaquette, and Vishal Kasu. And these folks have really gotten this project off the ground and moved it forward. Next slide. So today what we really want to share with you is our survey results. So, you know, what is the heart and soul and the kind of basic piece of this project that's really let us go out forth? And in the survey that we sent out, it was things that we were really looking for without giving you all the details, but generally, we just wanted to see what was the level of knowledge and importance of the issue, the issue being newer management and professionals related to that, organization type and years of experience of those who are participating in the survey, what were their tasks related to newer nutrient management, how would they rank natural resource concerns, information sources used by each of those groups as well, the barriers to that use, the projects that they created and the barriers to production of that, and who did they use as collaborators? Who were they working with and what were the barriers to those relationships? And lastly, were demographics. 